Welcome to DJN TV and Tuesday night with Ben Stowe. Now introducing the one and only Ben Stowe. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's Tuesday night once again. That's right. We're doing multiple Tuesdays in a row. I don't know if you can handle that. Can you handle That's it, Ben? A, yeah, no, I, I can handle it. Okay, good, good, I, good. Really, you're the... You you're... know what? It's funny. I can handle it. I can handle it. I was just... Just 15 minutes ago, I was talking to my wife, and uh, I made some comment about smoky-eyed makeup. I don't even know where I came from. And anyway, she said, <laughs> well, you know about smoky eye. And I said, I know my way around a woman. And she said, yeah, which one? I said... <laughs> Uh, Whoa, you. this is going in. <laughs> like, uh, only you. <laughs> uh, well, so. there's, uh, yeah, here's my foot. Watch me put it right in my mouth. <clears throat> yeah. No. yeah, well, yeah, she she put it there for me because she said, well, I've never had smoky eye makeup. Oh, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> That's right. So the, the woman behind. But isn't she lovely? She's beautiful. She, she is. She's, she's a wonderful yeah. person. And she puts yeah. up with you, which is an incredible testament to her. Man alive, yeah. I didn't know you heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our show for yeah, now. Yeah, there we go. Watching. Because man's gonna—he's in the doghouse now. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so tonight, gang, we're gonna dig into one of the 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 classic problems that mobile DJs have. You've got a controller. <laughs> <laughs> we're somewhat the uh, Ben's. We're trying to. We're gonna just drift away from Ben's problem for a little <coughs> So we have our controller. You know, some of you have got really nice DJ controllers. Some of you have maybe more of an entry level DJ controller that have a variety of different output capabilities, and you maybe want to up that game to go to your speakers, or maybe you've got you want to add extra microphones. There's just so many things. So many times the solution becomes having your DJ controller and a little separate mixer. A little separate, uh, usually an audio mixer like a, a small band would use or something to that effect. So tonight we're going to dig into how you would do that, how you'd make it work, and, and really help you make the decision if that's an, a right direction for you. So, Ben... There's a lot of different brands out there, and I, I don't. We're not going to just talk. We're not going to talk specific brands tonight. But when it comes to to those little audio, those little mic mixers, what's the biggest advantage of that kind of a, a connection to your speakers over what a DJ controller uh, connection could be to your speakers when it comes to sound quality? I would say probably the first thing that comes to mind, without a doubt, is the mic preamps. You know, they they tend to be a little bit better now. Again, as you said, they're not all created equal, and and uh, certainly there are probably some uh, cheaper, you know, off-brand types type things that might be worse. Might be a step backwards. You know, I don't know, but you know, I would say number one would be a, a mic preamp, uh, and and two a little bit more mic control. You know, would be uh, would be something, and and three would be you know typically these uh controllers have at least one aux so if we want to do like sub on aux uh which we i guess really wasn't part of our topic tonight but we can kind of throw it in there you know we, we could then separate our microphones and our playback music so that our microphones are never going through the subs in the first place we don't have to worry about low end you know handling noise and low end feedback because it's just not there in the first place it, you know it cleans that up a little bit and for those who are wondering exactly what he had just said, is that what he's re referring to the auxiliary out signal, and you would be taking that right directly to your subwoofer as opposed to running the full signal with everything there. But sometimes... Thank you for translating. Ben, <laughs> and, and actually, I've heard quite a few people who do a variation of that, especially when they get into a club situation, that that has been a preferred method where they can, as you say, keep the microphones out of those subs and have that control. Well, I think there's two reasons that, that you know, and, and as you said, an auxiliary or an aux is just an auxiliary mix. It's another mix within your mixer. Uh, and I think that, you know, one, being able to clean that up a little bit is really advantageous. Keep things out of the sub you don't want in the sub. Uh, also, is going to give you, you know, a bit more headroom with the sub, right? It's, mm. it's, it's doing less than, you know, it's not doing anything unnecessary. But it also gives you individual control over the sub level. Um, and, and of course, you know, we could also use aux mixes for things like your monitors in the booth if you want, although typically DJ controllers have a booth output and that might be preferred in that scenario. Uh, but the other thing also would be remote speakers, uh, hmm. you know, being able to use that aux bus to send things remotely. So, you know, just, just lots of reasons once you start doing that. But again, the biggest one is that you, you probably have better mic preamps and you probably have more of them. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, most DJ controllers have less than two mic inputs, you know, two or less. 
Um, and a small format live mixer probably has at least four. Hmm. That, that's, that's interesting because as I, I've looked at some, some have four, some have, more, and yet when I get down into them looking in the bottom, it's like, okay, so the, the things at the, the, the bottom, all the little knobs don't, aren't the same for all four or six channels, whatever, with many of them. Well, that's uh, you know, yeah. probably one of the biggest, uh, I, it's not a lie, but I feel like it's not a truth either. You know, what, the way they count these mixers is they'll say 16 channels, and mm -hmm. then you count and you're like, but I only see eight mic sockets. You know, how does that work? Well, well, because you got a couple stereo channels and those are technically two each. So that's four. And then, well, I got an, you know, AES or I got a USB and that's another couple. And it's, I'm kind of like, okay, I suppose technically it's 16, but I, I agree. I feel like it's a little bit of a kind of gets me lathered up. You know, and, yeah. and my, you know the consoles I use, uh, you know, for example, one of the consoles I love to use the most has only XLRs. It has no other inputs whatsoever uh, it, because basically in the pro touring world, everything gets sent that way eventually, you know, through a direct box or something. Uh, and it has 96 of them, but, you know. Uh, when they say 96, they mean 96. I get 96. And that's 96 in those big boards. It's literally every, all the controls and all the capability of channel one is the same as it is on 96. Every single one. Yep. Every single one. And it can sometimes you run into limitations with memory, like, you know, maybe not every channel can have uh, some of the more advanced processing, like multi band compression or dynamic EQ or some things that. You know, you wouldn't need 96 of anyway. Okay. You know, where they say, okay, you maybe don't have enough memory to do, but, but that, yeah, that otherwise, oh yeah, it's all the same, 96 across, you know, and, and now most of those, uh, you know, bridges have been crossed too, where you do have those things. But anyway, I, we're getting way off topic. No, so. no, I think, I th but I think those are, are good things to point out because even the smaller boards have uh, capabilities on maybe, you know, mic channel one and two, or maybe even just channel one that they may not have on channels two, three, and four. Correct. It can be. Yeah, your stereo channels certainly will behave differently. And that's not to say that stereo channels are bad. In fact, I've got some pretty little drawings we'll look at after a bit that show you why the stereo channels are very useful in the scenario we're talking about right now, where a DJ would want to use a couple mic preamps, two, four, whatever. You know, most DJs aren't typically using more than four mics, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's a, uh, you know, if you're doing karaoke, maybe, you know, you're using a few more, uh, you know, ceremony work, but, um, uh, would be a pretty extraordinary scenario where a DJ is regularly using more than four mics. But in that case, you still could get a small mixer that has six or eight mic sure. preamps. No biggie. Mm -hmm. Is the, the, the controls and such, are they fairly universal as far as when we were talking about that, like the 96 channel board, there's a lot of capability with, with compression and, and gates and whatever. Um, do uh, some of that capability, are those in some of those smaller boards also? Yes, to a degree. Typically, we find things like push button compression where it's either in or out. You know, you don't have a lot of ability to adjust things like, you know, attack or, you know, threshold or knee or any of those kinds of things. It's, you know, it's either in or out and you get it or don't get it. Uh, you, you typically don't find more advanced dynamics like gate, things like that. Uh, not in these small analog boards, but, you know, there are small uh, digital boards that have all of these things built in. And it's incredible, uh, the level of processing capability now at the fingertips of DJs. So, uh, you know, yeah, we could take a look at things like the UI series or the Digital Live 16, uh, or, you know, which I love, or the Touch Mix, or, or any of these little uh, inexpensive digital boards, uh, you know, Persona Studio Live series, um, you know, they've got their one rack U chassis, that sort of thing. So yes and no is the answer, you know, in, in your small, you know, hundred, two hundred dollar analog boards. You're probably not going to find anything really like that. You're going to mm -hmm. find basic three band EQ, maybe a sweepable mid, uh, high pass filter, which I pass everything, folks. I pass everything. Uh, I've been saying for years. I'm going to make a T-shirt that says that. I just haven't got around to. It. Anyway, uh, <laughs> eventually. <clears throat> but but yeah, pretty much they all. Um, once we strip away some of those things, they pretty much all do the same thing, and they all do it pretty much the same. Uh, you could look at one and look at another, and it's going to be fairly uh, translatable pretty quick. You mm -hmm. say, well, I can use this board, I can use this board. You know, it gets a little bit more nuanced when you get into the bigger boards. They've got more features under the hood. Maybe you have to go through some menus or layers to find the thing you're looking for. But at the end of the day, 
you know, basically gates are gates and compression is compression and preamps are, you know, I, and I, don't, I know there's some audio purists that are going, no, but they don't sound the same. Yeah, All right. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, you know? For, for the mo typical mobile DJ, I mean, some of that functionality is nice to have. And once you get comfortable with it, you can, it can make a difference. But it's not a game changer or game, I shouldn't say a, a deal breaker. I think it can be a game changer to have those things, but yeah. But it isn't something that if you don't have that, you're like, oh my gosh, I, I was thought I was doing so well, and then I don't have I don't have this this capability. Well, I, yes, that's true. I, I will say uh, once you've had it, it's hard not to. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I will say that. I find myself missing those things when I work on smaller boards and things, corporate AV, things that don't have it. I'm like, oh, if I only had. I had this, I want to send this mix to this, and, and I can't. Oh. That's, that's really, yeah, it, it uh, you know, because you, you know what you could have, but I, I think too, having more than you do now is still an improvement. You know, getting a, a small analog board that gives you some of those additional capabilities you currently don't have with your uh, co controller is still a step in the right direction, mm -hmm. you know, and, and whether or not you need those things, since you've never missed them is, yeah, it's hard to say. Um, and I think situationally, you know, too, there's a time and a place where you can, you know, maybe you want it, but you don't need it, you'll mm -hmm. survive, you know? I um, just had a good friend over the other day uh, who had brought over a small digital board that I had sold him and he brought it over and we had it out on my kitchen table and we went through a few things and um, he reported back uh, just how much that had helped his first gig. He said, oh my gosh, it's just, yeah, it helped a bunch. And that, that was rewarding for me, you know, to know that. But now now that he has those tools, it'll be hard not to use them, you know. And and uh, just to kind of wrap that area up is it kind of related it to we were talking talking to another DJ and he's like, yeah, I don't use the, any of that type of stuff on my. I don't. I just basically run everything and and flat and whatever, all knobs, compression and such. And it's like it's kind of uh, kind of, it's like a hammer. There's the, the hammer's got the claw part and it's got the it's got the head of the hammer. And and if you're not using some of that stuff, you can function. You, your hammer can function. As a, but, you know, there's that other side, and once you start using the claw side of it to do parts of it, you find out that, wow, this is a, a multi-purpose tool that can do a lot of different things. And uh, to yeah. a point, and they're not wanting to utilize some of the, the functionality, that's fine, and it'll work, but you're kind of missing out. Yeah, I think the first time you pull a nail with the claw, and the second time you try to do it without one, you're going to say, man, this was a lot easier yeah, with the Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My player just isn't doing it. I don't yeah, want it. Hmm. I know there's a tool for this that makes my life easier. Right? If I only yeah. could remember what it was, I just, I don't know. I have probably a good story. It's probably too long to tell for the show, but it's about my niece's wedding where I got voluntold to uh, run sound and the church had a large old analog desk. And I, one, I wasn't happy that I was stuck working while everybody else was enjoying the wedding. Uh, but uh, two, um, uh, I was missing a lot of these things. I'm like, if only. If only. I, I, where's the... <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, one of the, one of the vocalists that was singing really, you know, needed some reverb and, and, and probably a delay would have helped too. And I'm like, ah, I could just, I could just shine that vocal right up. You know, I'm like, if I only had, if I, you know. and, you know, so those are the things that are going through my head the whole time this wedding's happening. I'm like, ah, oh, if I only had, you know, this and that. And, and then afterwards, everyone's like, it was such a beautiful wedding. Did you see it? It's like the board i need to buttons more buttons you're not far off john you're not far off i'm you know I'm <laughs> slamming punch and wedding cake just trying to drown my sorrows, yeah, sorrows with the, the board. Yeah, frustration so we need to start looking at some pictures we haven't looked at pictures for a while and it's time all right uh well uh let's see which pictures should we look at should we look at uh routing some things from uh dj controller into i think a board? so i think i think the idea of of taking that control well let, let's talk about which which would be the best way to handle this is because i've i've had people mention that they would take their their little mixer there and they would put the microphones into that for their karaoke and they would mm -hmm. run that into the controller a mic input and then to the speakers Mike's my, my thought is that that's probably not the best way to do it. Well, I think this is an area of subjectivity. Uh, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. I think that for one thing, the analog board has more IO capability. So we're kind of going backwards here. You know, uh, we would be better served, I think, by sending everything into the small mixer and then out to the speakers, because then we can use that sub on aux. And then, you know, we have those kinds of things going on but there might be a reason that somebody wants to go the other way and 
Can we say it's just a would... bad reason and just you know saying it's naughty? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go that far. I'm not okay, well, that but wrong. I could. Because you could. Yeah, I could. You know. Technically, my name's not on a show. So if I go and say it's naughty and Ben Look, says- I already got in trouble with my wife. I'm not getting in trouble with our viewers too. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's exactly. I, so I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm still good. I, I'm, no one's come up behind me and I, may, I better make sure. Nope, no one's yeah, back. Take a look because Lori's right behind me. <laughs> no one's guess. back here. I am good. So, so the, the preferred method we're going to state for tonight's show unofficially is controller into our, our little board and then to our speakers in whatever con- fashion we need to go to our speakers. That part we're not going to worry about right now. So That's what's, how I would do it. Let's, how, would we, how would you recommend then for us to start you know, making these connections? What would be the best way? Well, I think I'm going to do that with a drawing. Um, nice. Yeah, I think we can... Uh, we're going to start with... And if they don't uh, do it right, can we do like a flaming wire that isn't working anymore because it's burned up and they did it wrong? You know, it's funny. I actually thought about a fire reference and I'll uh, I'll, I'll tell you about it in a second Ooh. because I was actually trying to illustrate a point, but that was when I was thinking about mic versus line voltage. And, and, oh, and yeah. The, yeah, if we can dive into that in a little we bit. We will. We definitely I, will. I was, abs- I was actually... It's amazing what you can find on the internet. I was actually uh, doing internet searches for... Um, uh, audio flamethrower, <laughs> you know, uh, m- mixing board on fire. Uh, I was really disappointed. I thought I would find more mixing boards on fire, but no, I didn't not find so much, not so so, much. Uh, Anyway, uh, what we can see here is this is a, we'll call it, you know, a basic small format analog console. Now, some of you might say, well, it's kind of big to me. Okay, but categorically speaking, it's a small format desk. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when we get smaller, we just take away some of these things. Uh, but the functionality remains pretty much the same. Uh, this is, and as you said, John, to your point, uh, where they kind of lie, but they don't lie. This is a 12 channel board, uh, but yet we'll notice that it actually has channels up to 14, um, but it only has eight mic preamps. So, I mean, you know, technically, I guess it is 12 channels if you count them, but sure. We're, I digress. All right. So, um, uh, anyway, what so, we can so see here. First off, first off, for, just to kind of now, as I'm looking down the channels, I see you know we've got we've got uh, some you've got your XLR at the top, then you have the quarter inch, but then I've got like number three and four that don't have a, a there, there's a a difference there in three and four compared to one and two when it came to that, and then as we look down, I see that there's little gray buttons, but a little bit below your that is also inconsistent across there. So we are seeing in those channels, a, a, a lot of variety in control capability. Yeah, are you talking about these buttons yeah. here? So the, the buttons on the left uh, correspond to, uh, you know, basically we've got instrument inputs on this thing where it, it in essence has a high Z input, uh, sort of has a built-in direct box. All of these channels have uh, this high pass filter, which again, high pass everything, right? That's mm-hmm. gonna, uh, well, not everything, not your music, but um, this is going to knock out, I think it's probably 100 hertz, uh, so it's going to knock out 100 hertz and below out of your microphones, definitely something you should do. Uh, and what we can see the difference when we get over here is we've got these eight mic preamps, but then starting uh, you know, here, we've got stereo channels. So these are technically also stereo channels, uh, so they've got two inputs per channel. Sure. And that's how, how that channel count gets a little funky. And anyway, our mic preamps, our balanced mic level, our line inputs here, our stereo inputs, our line level stereo inputs. And so what we can see I've done is I've brought my, my mics, wired and wireless, into my mic preamps. Mm-hmm. I've got my preamp gain control here, so on and so forth. My EQ section in here. Yeah. Uh, my I drew that box a little bit big. Uh, you know, my aux sends down here, uh, my pan here. Uh, oh, that's probably not the pan. Sorry, I got there. You my go. screen's probably a little smaller than yours. Yep. <laughs> anyway, uh, boy, if I could read it, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so you know, all the things that I might want to use on my microphone, you know, there, and then I've I've taken this unbalanced line level stereo audio out of the rca outputs on my mixing board and i have brought them into the quarter inch unbalanced line level stereo inputs now two questions you're probably thinking one why didn't i use the rcas when they're sitting right there and you certainly could 
In this case, the reason I didn't is because this channel also has Bluetooth and I wanted to save that so I could, you know, if you need it. Yeah, makes sense. So I was like, well, electrically speaking, RCA quarter inch line level, same, same. This gives me the ability to save that channel for something else in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, never going to know when you might need that. The next question that I get asked an awful lot is, isn't XLR better? And the answer is, it, de it depends. Depends. Yeah. There we go. Yes, XLR is better in almost every sense of the word, in almost every sense of the way, given a couple things. One, that it's XLR on both ends. We would have no real benefit in coming from this XLR and plugging into these stereo jacks. In fact, we have a, a potential problem because we now have balance driving unbalanced. Mm -hmm. That's not good. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing is we could say, well, we could go from these XLRs to these XLRs. That's true. And we'll get to that in a minute, though, because this is line level and this is mic level. So here's the takeaway. Uh, for this distance, which is probably three feet, six feet, whatever, unbalanced stereo is probably the preferable way to go sure. for me. Uh, I don't have to worry about any conversions of balanced, unbalanced line mic. It is plug and play. Uh, I'm not really that worried about signal degradation or things over that distance. So that's what I would do. Now, I do have balanced XLRs going out to my speakers, and I've got these aux outputs we talked about where I could say, well, uh, you know, I, and I do have three auxes on this board, by the way, but, uh, you know, maybe I'm going to send an aux to the videographer. Uh, maybe I'm going to send an aux to the remote uh, speakers, or maybe I'm going to send an aux to this... my sub. Look at that. Magic. Anyway, what will you do with your aux? It depends. It's up to you. Ah, now let's look at a similar setup. Um... So, so Ben, Ben, you you mentioned, of course, that it's coming out of the board that is a line level, and the XLR on the uh, Personas in this situation is a mic level. Can can you address that just a little bit? So, for people who are confused about what those the difference is between those two. Yes, I will. Let's let's hold that one okay. for a bit. Uh, uh, we'll make so a note. People, if you're confused, stay tuned. We're going to come back to that because that brings us back to our mixing board on fire, audio flamethrower graphic I could not find. Oh, man. So, Where's, where is my color crayon? Orange color crayon. Well, so, I, got, I got a red annotation tool. I could just do ooh. like... Oh, now we're on fire. Yeah. The girl is on fire. How's that? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's look at another mixing board. So here we have one of those little digital boards that we talked about, mm -hmm. uh, lots of options. I just happened to pick a UI 12, um, no particular reason. So re you know, viewers don't uh, read into that. And here again, we can say, well, I've got, uh, RCA outputs here and I've got RCA inputs here. So I should just do that. And sure. I probably would. Uh, and here again, I've got two aux outs. Uh, I've got my videographer and my remote speakers. Main speakers coming out of the uh, balanced XLRs and my mics going into mic preamps. Now, if you're looking at this and you're saying, well, that looks a little bit funny. Uh, you know, why doesn't this jack and this jack look the same? Uh, this one is really electrically the same. It has three little holes, just like our XLR. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it also has the ability to uh, stick a quarter inch in the center. So I can plug my XLRs into those top two, one and two. <clears throat> and uh, just as it happens to be, you'll notice the little graphic over the top there too. It has some additional processing that's only available on those two channels. Okay. So uh, whether or not you want to use those two channels for microphones or for something else, um, it depends. Depends on if you want to use that processing on the guitar or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, now, so option three uh, is I could also use the XLRs. Uh, so, again, I think the preferential way here would be to stay line level unbalanced rather than going balanced uh, line into mic, uh, but you can. And uh, we'll look at the, uh, we'll look at the what challenges that gives you i think here in a, in a second mm -hmm. uh and then we'll see why maybe why you would or wouldn't do that sure you know? questions on this before i close the screen i think we're good on that i think uh i think it it, it yeah i think we're good okay 
Are you ready for the flamethrower? I think so. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, notwithstanding the different types of connectors, which I think we should also dive into a little bit, uh, we could have a little bit of fun with that. You know, the difference between RCA, mm -hmm. quarter inch, XLR. Uh, but let's look at some audio levels real quick. Uh, and uh, I worked hard on this graphic. Um, I, I spent a few minutes in Excel to make it. Sure. <laughs> so uh, please appreciate that. Uh, what I, I've got on here is a combination of things. And I think if we just don't look at the whole screen at once and just kind of we'll take a guided tour, uh, that'll be easier. If you try to look at the whole screen at once, maybe this is going to be a little bit uh, more of a heartache. But uh, ultimately, what I want you to do is to think about your audio signal in voltage. It's just voltage. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it is just voltage. Whenever it's living inside of our equipment, it's just voltage. Outside of that, it's acoustic energy. Inside there, it's voltage. If it's digital, it's ones and zeros, but it's still got to be voltage to get converted to those. Uh, and so we've probably heard these expressions, you know, plus 4 dBU and minus 10 dBV. And uh, astute uh, people will notice right away that that U and that V are different. The U and the V are not the same, uh, despite what the Romans are trying to tell you. Uh, so, uh, you know, here we can see that, uh, you know, plus 4 dBU and minus 10 dBV equate to different voltages, 1.228 uh, volts RMS and, uh, you know, 0.316. Uh, and uh, I think if we, if we look, we can see that we can convert this. I can convert dBUs to dBVs and I convert dBVs to dBUs and there we can see what their value is. And there's a lot of funny numbers and ways to measure these things. But again, if we just think about it in terms of voltage, uh, the chart that I made in Excel, I think summarizes it really, really well. Uh, because these are both line level voltages that we're talking about here. And there's a variation you can see between those two, mm -hmm. depending on, you know, we often hear it called pro and consumer. Uh, but down here, let's just look at some typical voltages. Uh, and, and what they translate to, um, basically, um, one line level is, you know, one dBV. It's uh, one volt, uh, uh, zero dBV, one volt, sorry. Um, anyway, you can see here that uh, that is, so, you know, one volt is a thousand millivolts. And our mic signal is between one and 10 millivolts. So I just split it down the middle and made it five. Mm -hmm. And I think the takeaway is you can see how much more power here, how much more electromotive force in terms of voltage is being expressed in a line level signal versus a mic level signal. Mm -hmm. So if you have a mixer that is expecting a mic level signal, it's expecting that very small amount of voltage and we give it this, that would be a problem. Sure. Uh, now, usually your gear doesn't actually burst into flames, which is probably why there's a shortage of flaming mixing board pictures on the internet. But what we do have is a very crappy sounding signal, massively distorted because it simply cannot accurately reproduce that signal unless we turn it way down. Mm -hmm. And typically, you know, we're talking about this being expressed as like, you know, minus 40, you know, uh, dBV. So, um, okay, so uh, tangent time here. Yeah. So we've got a mic level that's very, very low. You've got your line level that is there. Where does phono uh, level? Because I, I've run into that on on some of the you know since we've been talking talking uh, uh, turntables recently a little bit. Uh, where does that fall into this? This does it fall? Is it closer to the mic? Is it closer to a line level, or is it something altogether different? Um. I don't actually know what the voltage of phono is. I, I do know that there it's probably significantly lower. Uh, and it's funny because as old as I am, I should know, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, because we have things called phono preamps, yeah, uh, which is just like how we have mic preamps. And the purpose of a mic preamp uh, is to bring this up to this. Mm -hmm. So that's why when I plug it into that XLR, is my XLR. How'd I do? Pretty good, right? Looks like a sad Halloween pumpkin. All right, coming. hush. So plug that into the uh, mic preamp and then my preamp preamplifies it up to line level and there mm. are phono preamps as well yeah and i 
I'm embarrassed to say I don't remember. Yeah, I, I just remember. I, you know, we there's been so much discussion about it. It's like, huh, you know, I've I've never thought about that. But if it's lower or higher, but yeah, and there's phono preamps in it, so it must be okay. So if anybody knows, put it in the comments. If anybody's googling it, put it in the comments. There you go. We'll all do it. Uh, learn together. You know, we had a, we talked about AI last week on the show. AI asked some great questions. AI probably knows that, but you know, uh, I don't know. Whatever. I'll get replaced by a machine soon. Uh, <laughs> That'd be great. Hey, machines machines ain't unloading the trucks uh, yet, so there's that. I, and they're I, not eating the ice cream, which is the most important part. Obviously. For uh, sure. Happy to report that much ice cream was eaten uh, over the last couple of weeks. But uh, anyway, uh, this is the key takeaway I wanted to illustrate here is, is why when we plug a line level signal into a mic level preamp, uh, we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. We've got to turn that sucker way down because, again, it's, you know, minus 40, minus 60 dBV you know, as what we're expecting here. Um, and because uh, it's expecting to have a very low signal that it needs to boost back up to that. Sure. Uh, typically, we use things like direct boxes and stuff that balance the signal and pad it down to mic level for that purpose. Uh, so you can plug in the line level XLR into your mixers, uh, you know, mic level preamps, but you need to turn that stuff way down. Uh, which is why it's such a mismatch, I think, for that short a distance. There's no real gain to do that. I think it's probably better to just go RCA mm -hmm. or RCA to quarter inch and stay there. And then, you know, down here we can see just some of the different uh, ways of measuring this. You know, uh, you can see that DBU and DBV are both measures of voltage. DBM is measures of power in milliwatt. DBW is measures of power in watts. Uh, you know, SPL, you know, measures of sound in Pascals. And then DB full space. You know, that just it rep represents the maximum signal possible in a digital circuit, which varies from circuit to circuit, which can be very frustrating because it's not a directly, you know, translatable or correlatable number. Any of hmm. these other numbers, you know, we can we can calculate from the other, basically, you know. Sure. So, uh, Steve uh, mentions, mentions that the phono is very, very low voltage, uh, even I, I think it's lower than Mike. Mic voltage. So yeah, it would be a very low voltage that needs to be pumped up. So Mike is between one and 10 milliamps. That's pretty low. He's got- uh, Milli, millivolts. I'm sorry, not let's milliamps. Let's see. So it's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, two ten thousandths to seven thousandths of a volt? Well, that would be- So seven thousandths would be seven milliamps. Which, seven. Mil, I keep saying milliamps. Viewers, I don't mean milliamps. Look, the show is free. You're not getting your money back. Uh, so millivolts- <laughs> There's no milliamps here. Just okay. forget about the milliamps. It's a millivolt. So you did not hear me say milliamps. Uh, anyway, it's, it's a millivolt. I'm struggling today. I'm sorry. No, we're doing. So, we're doing fine. We're so seven thousandths of a volt would be seven millivolts. Okay. Uh, so if it's in that two to seven, then it is pretty much exactly the same as mic level. So, Excellent. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Yes. Thank you for thank you for pointing that out. Thank Helping you for not being a robot. That doesn't like ice cream. Steve likes ice cream. You know, ice cream would make robots rust, probably. That so, would. Yeah. And that would. And then we could take over the world again. Honestly, they're lost. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so I ain't scared. I like I. <laughs> I ain't scared. You know I know where people, the cord gets plugged in. You know how many people mentioned the Terminator comment last week? That was hilarious. <laughs> uh, a couple people brought it up in conversation. They're like, "I saw Terminator. I ain't scared." <laughs> <laughs> I know how to deal with robots. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. I so. Yeah. So we, we've great. established there's a huge difference. That's why we, we went with the RCAs. Now let's kind of talk about, because we've got RCAs, we have XLRs, we have a quarter inch with a variety of different options when it comes to the quarter inch type connections. And these all can be used to make those jumps from device to device. Yeah, they can. So let's pull up a couple more uh, pictures that I got here. Uh, whip these out for you so uh you should see a few yep. connectors on your screen right now and uh, i'm going to change my annotation color so what you can see is that as the arrows point i stole this right out of one of my own presentations so I'll plagiarize myself so those nice. of you who've been to some of my presentations you may recognize this if you weren't asleep by this point uh but you can see that this has a sleeve and this has a sleeve and this has a sleeve and you can see that uh, this has a tip, and this has a tip, and this has a tip. And you can see that only this one has a ring. So 
you love it, put a ring on it, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if we count real quick, uh, evoking the uh, spirit of the count from Sesame Street, we can see that we've got one, two, three, three conductors in an XLR. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, now, XLR can have between four and uh, three and seven, by the way, but mm. in audio XLR is three. And we can see here I've got three conductors on my XLR. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, <clears throat> Look, like I said, it's a free show. Exactly. So, and if you don't get the, you know, count reference, you know. If you don't get the count from Sesame Street, seriously, <sighs> what? I mean, yeah, I mean, well, again, we're talking to young guys, you know, you know, there's guys like Howie in there. I think we, Sesame some, Street's still on. So, still you gotta, on. We got to explain some of our, our old references to those young bucks like that once in a while. All the Spanish I know I learned from Sesame Street, and believe me, it has saved my bacon a few times. Uh, <laughs> somebody actually thought I was a fluent speaker in Vegas until they found out that I was just repeating the phrase I knew. But anyway, yeah, exactly. so, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm working on it. Though. I'm trying. I'm trying to get better. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, down here, we can see that these only have two and this one has three like our xlrs so therein lies kind of the conundrum if i'm trying to plug this into this what do i do with the extra pin that i have mm -hmm. you have to deal with that somehow and that's a different show because that, honestly, uh, that's a career. You know, people like, you know, Neil Muncy and, and Henry Ott have made careers out of writing and studying this sort of thing about, you know, what to do with the pin one problem, so to speak. But the short answer, well, no, I'm not that I, we got a graphic for the short answer. Short answer is it's better if we don't have to deal with it. Right. You know? Yep. Uh, and in this case, we don't. We, we, we've got connections on both sides of the mixer that match. Uh, okay. So let's take a look at this and we're going to have pop quiz uh, i don't know how fast people can do the comments but it takes we get about a 20 second uh delay so, 20 <clears throat> okay, second, well, that's, seconds. so john i'll just put you on the spot yeah. so viewers watch john squirm this is going to be great it'll be fun uh, it's going to be awesome oh look Scoot. at the time we're out of time oh, time's oh up. show's oh, over bye, everybody thanks for watching <laughs> not so Next. fast but... oh sorry go ahead you know who my other favorite sesame street character is oscar the grouch you nailed it. So here we go. All right. So I'm coming for you. Uh, all right. Trash, trash, okay. trash. I got to pull the image. Got to get it on the front of there. So, so I can't follow chat for a few minutes because I'm focusing. That's all right. You don't want to see what they're going to say. One of anyway. these things so, is not like the other. You got it. We're going to toast you here. So, all right. Uh, so, John. Mm -hmm. Pop quiz. First connector. This one right here. Yes. Mono or stereo? It's mono. It's mono, he says. Yes. And he is right. Good job. Next connector, mono or stereo? This one is an, it depends on how it is wired. Oh, you're too good, John. Gosh, dang it. Uh, yes, you're right. But because there's a reflection behind there, I can see that that was wired stereo. No, wait, I can't see that, sorry. So what about this one? Yeah, exactly. That's that's just confusion, and it makes me frustrated. Actually, the part that makes me frustrated is that if you are using wires and you're not familiar with how they're, how they're put together, you have no idea. They look like they could be stereo, but maybe they're not wired properly. Bingo. 100%, John. And a good way to tell without opening your wire, by the way, is to have one of our handy moat cable testers from Mental Effects because it will tell you exactly what you so want. To know. Even if you don't think your cable's bad, you just might be nice to know how it's wired. All right. So let's get to the punchline for all this and let me show you how John is correct. And by the way, thanks for ruining my fun, John. I was really hoping you were going to screw this up so oh. we could just, yeah, but doggone it, you're too smart. So sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> so here you can see the answer. John is correct. First connector is mono. It has a signal positive, and then it has a signal negative and ground shared <coughs> on the sleeve because it is an unbalanced connection. Mm -hmm. Most people say when I give these presentations that this connector is stereo. 
because that's the context in which they're familiar with it, like a mm -hmm. headphone. Yeah, yeah, very much so. But in this case, this is not stereo. This is also mono balanced. So we have our signal positive, our signal negative on the ring, and then our signal ground separate from the from the signal ground, unlike the unbalanced. See the difference here? And that's why this signal is mono. So now Ben, hang on. Is that mm -hmm. is the the positive, negative, and ground, is that consistent as the pin one, pin two, pin three is on our XLR? Are those kind of industry that's always like that when it is a balanced run like that? It's supposed to be. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's more or less resolved. And I was laughing because I had mentioned uh, Neil Muncy earlier. And, and like I said, literally back in the 70s, Neil made a career out of trying to get everybody on Consistent. the same page. Yeah, for sure. In fact, if you look at old gear now, younger viewers, uh, here's a little history lesson for you. And I'm embarrassed to say that me and John are old enough to have actually seen this in real life. Uh, but uh, if you looked at an older piece of gear, it would say pin two hot or <sighs> pin three hot. It would yep. specify because there was not a prevailing standard and thanks to our friends at the aes uh that got resolved and uh pin one more or less got resolved so short answer tldr is yes it should always be standard tip ring sleeve and how it mates to the uh numerical assignment on the xlr those those uh, connectors are numbered uh so what we should see is this would be two that's a two this would be three, and that would be one on our XLR. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me, as we can see, uh, this quarter inch TRS tip ring sleeve can also be stereo and mm -hmm. is now a stereo unbalanced. We have a common signal negative, which shares the ground just as it does over here because it is an unbalanced signal, just like this one, but it now has a left and a right, which is like our headphones. Mm -hmm. They share a ground, they share a common, and then they have left and right signal positives, unlike our mono balanced. By the way, quick punchline, if you take a uh, stereo, excuse me, if you take a, a, a mono balanced and you plug it into a, a stereo unbalanced connection, it's going to sound freakishly weird. And that's, that was where I was just going to go. So on our board, you showed us where there were stereo quarter-inch inputs. Yep. And if we would do that, we would be hearing Yoda sings the blues, but played backwards on our turntable. Kind of like that, yeah. Kind of. um, you know, because again, that jack, those jacks are their dual TS. I don't have my annotation tool up, sorry. On the board are two of these. So it's expecting a left and a right mm -hmm. individually, not combined. And in essence, what we'd be, you know, plugging in if we plugged in a TRS stereo is now we've got kind of a problem here. Right? Sure. You know, so uh, yeah, it's uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, you can sort of do this on purpose in, in some, you know, music software by trying to, you know, take things uh, out of phase for cancellation, whatever, you know, uh, eliminating, you know, lyrics, whatever, but because they're typically pan center. Anyway, bottom line, it's going to sound thin and weird and not right. And this is why. Mm -hmm. uh, so important to stick the right thing in the right place. Boy, words to live by. <laughs> you know, since I'm already in trouble with my wife, I'll just say. I was thinking something... fork in an outlet, but hey, whatever, wherever you're going, man. <laughs> What a, Listen, man, DJs are our primary audience here. I think they're going to follow this example. So they're going to they're gonna, they're they're, gonna see where I'm going with this. Yeah, they're not taking a fork to the outlet. Okay, fine. Spoon. Just because it fits in a hole doesn't mean you should put it there. Uh, okay. Lessons, life lessons from Ben Still. Talking about audio jacks, but it probably translates to other things too. So, Possibly. You know, forks and outlets, for example. So... There's occasionally occasionally times where you have you have wires and they have like they have done a Y and splitters and such. Short of having a moat type of a, a device to be able to tell what these are, I mean, how would how would you tell it what how they've wired them without a moat? 
Well, that's a good question, you know, because uh, you're right that th there's a lot of different ways you can wire a, a Y cable. And of course, we have people that request custom cables and they probably get irritated sometimes when we ask, well, what are you doing with it? Well, we're mm -hmm. trying to save, you know, we're, and then they're like, well, just wire me a Y cable. Oh, if only it was that simple. You know, we have a booklet of wiring combinations. And, and I think some people don't understand, like, you know, when we hire a new customer service person who maybe comes from outside the industry, they're like, well, how come they know what they're talking about? They're not electrical engineers, they're customer service people. They can tell you where your order's at, you know? Uh, but that's why we have engineers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so to answer the question, and, and by the way, we do try to teach our customer service people these things, but there is a learning curve, right? So uh, you could use a continuity tester on a multimeter. You could open the shells of the connectors if they're not molded, if you can open them, you know, and they're not heat shrunk inside or something, you know, but th those are probably some of the, I mean, yeah, I guess you could plug it in and if it doesn't sound right, it probably not, right? You know, mm -hmm. but. Uh, those would be the couple of quick things that would come to my mind, you know. And I mean, ultimately, the the best way to handle it, because there have been times where I've gone to a a venue, and they're like, "Hey, plug the plug into this, so it can put ceremony outside." And it's like, okay, I it's a quarter inch jack, it's tip, it's a tip ring sleeve, and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, what what do I, I, I did? And it would be nice to know. So having a moat to be able to test and see what kind of that wire is and what it's going would be beneficial. Well, that's just it. I mean, yeah, you know, we're talking, you know, a mode is 69 bucks and includes a case and some, you know, test probes. And I mean, I know, I mean, I know money doesn't grow on trees and I, I know that's not chump change to, to, you know, for some folks. And, you know, you're talking to a guy whose career started out making coffee can lights, you know, mm -hmm. but, but honestly, compared to the price of every other piece of DJ gear, I mean, yeah, it's you, you got to have a moat, you know, so that's obviously I'm biased, you know, I'm also a guy who owns about every tester known to man because they were pretty cool, you know, yeah. but <laughs> uh, we got a question that came in, um, uh, Superfly was wondering because he, he performs in a variety of different clubs around, uh, around the state and around the, uh, the, the country. And sometimes the DJ controller is in one space and it's a long run to the, uh, to the actual mixer for the club. Uh, when you get into a longer run, then how would you recommend them being able to go from a controller to that, uh, that mixer, which is probably very similar to a band mixer or the, the mixer that we were showing earlier? Well, now we're talking something different because uh, unbalanced connectors, because they share that signal ground and uh, that signal minus, we don't want to run those a very long distance. You know, 10 feet is kind of my max, you know, I mean, you can go a little longer. It's not the end of the world, but 10 feet is kind of my max, you know, uh, good, solid, balanced XLR, uh, NLFX Platinum Series. You can go our maximum recommended run length is 800 feet. So pretty big difference there. Uh, so I would say definitely do it with a balanced signal. Definitely do it, you know, over XLR, good quality XLR. Uh, now, here again, we can do it with that voltage mismatch and say, well, I'm going to push this line level signal, you know, into my mixer and then I'm going to have to, you know, pad it down and, and turn down my preamp and, and that's okay. Uh, maybe a better way to do it or certainly how we would do it on a stage is I would put a direct box, a stereo DI, you know, which is going to balance that signal and pad it down to mic level. Uh, and also provide things like ground lift and stuff to get rid of any hum or buzz. So that's how I would do it. And you would have that DI then, you would run the, from the controller, we'd take the two XLR outs, we'd run the wire da -da 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 over, mm -hmm. and then we'd have the DI, stereo DI. So we'd plug into that near the main mixer and then run the, probably I'm guessing an eighth inch stereo out of the DI box into the eighth inch stereo input on the mixer. Uh, or backwards. Got, got that backwards. Let me do a whiteboard for you. Okay. Um, so, all right, new whiteboard, open and collaborate. Here we go. You get narration on the Zoom. You have to tell me when you can yep, see. Yep, we can see the whiteboard. Yep. Okay, so say this is my DJ controller. Mm -hmm. DJ! It's kind of looking like a Roland one. It's a little more boxy than the, than the other one. Is that better? There we go. Now, now it's looking definitely much more like our Pioneer. What do you got against Roland? Actually, I, I own them, so I own one, so I'm, I'm good. Yeah, no, I know you do. So I was like, what do you got against Roland? Yeah. All right, well, let's see. Uh, this is my DI, DI box. Yeah. Oh. I was looking for a way to make it green because the radial Pro AV2 is green. So, oh. but anyway, so here I'm going to do my uh, RCAs. Oh, okay. Because the those I want to keep short, right? So this mm -hmm. is my short distance. 
and uh, then from here I can run XLR Oops. that cable didn't exist never mind that. There you go. that was our spare wire in case we needed it which we did not need it because all the wires were NLFX wires so we knew they would work the first time that's right but we always carry spares but we always carry spares because we're responsible uh, so, you know, here we're talking, you know, 10 feet or less. And here we can go up to 800 feet. You know, a typical okay. stage snake, typical stage snake might be 300 feet mm -hmm. even, you know. So, and then those uh, XLRs, hey, really about it. and yeah. then those would go into a mic level input on the board? Correct, because this DI does three things. Uh, having a lot of fun with this whiteboard. I really need to play with these more often. So, oh, you're, you're, you're getting there. Oh, look at that. How you doing? Oh. Okay, no longer having fun with the whiteboard. <laughs> we were doing so well until <laughs> I was. <laughs> Stop. There we go. It's going to balance the signal. It's going to pad the signal. And it's going to uh, lift the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, potentially if we need it to. So there we go. Gonna, yeah. So that's why the DI does all kinds of things. So this comes in as line level, comes out as mic level, comes in as unbalanced, comes out as balanced. And if we have a ground voltage potential difference between these two mixers and we have a buzz or a hum, I push the button and it goes away. Excellent. Good. I'm glad, glad we, we were able to sketch that out because that was definitely helpful. Yeah. Me too, and I'm no longer having fun with whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, no, wonderful that, th and Superfly, uh, thank, thank you for that, because, yeah, good, good stuff. So, Ben, our time is up, and we've got uh, we've got Howie and the crew getting ready to go in the uh, in in the chill room here next. Uh, they are going to be out at djntv.com slash chill. You guys can uh, pop out there. I just put the link up. Uh, in uh, in the chat so they can jump out to that um next week we will be back again on tuesday night and we've got another topic for you and then we'll be uh, we'll have to figure the week out after we're not sure exactly what ben's schedule is going to be so uh get, we'll be back again uh to talk gear and fun stuff and it should be fabulous we strive for fabulous we do we strive for fabulous and and then the snow is going to melt and then we'll be like outside doing campfire shows it'll be great you know, we've never actually done a campfire. We've show. talked we've about talked it. We've talked about it. Yeah, I for... think it needs to happen. Viewers, we rise up and let your voices be heard. We need to do a campfire show. I mean, Mostly because I just want to be around a campfire. <laughs> you know, technically, we almost it's almost been 10 years that we've been doing this show because it was, I think, 2014 we did, our, we did our first. So we're like in year nine now wow. of, of, uh, of doing this. So we've got to get a campfire show in before we hit 10 years. It's just got to be. Or we... They'll probably want us to do a camp the campfire show on the anniversary, which is early February. Well, uh, twenty twenty. I mean, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. We're we're hardy Minnesotans. We can be out there. I believe in this is the tenth anniversary of the lighting and audio symposium. Yeah, too. it's it's amazing how Our it doesn't. Tenth anniversary. It doesn't seem I, to be. Yeah. Time. Ten time. sounds like a good, nice round number. It does. Uh, it does. It sounds like a. But you know, I don't know if, how that happens. I mean, we're only like twenty five years old, so I mean, we must have been started started really early. Started young, but I can tell you, before COVID, this wasn't great. Yeah, so. exactly. We're teenagers, one or the other. <laughs> I'm gonna just shave this off. I just don't like. I don't know. Just, yeah. just lazy. Yeah, well, you know. But we've got that cold temps in northern Minnesota, so another another two months, and then you'll be able to shave it off. Then I'll have to shave it. Yeah, because it'll go to summer. summer. I don't. I don't know. It gets. It gets so hot. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for being with us tonight. Uh, to Howie and the crew, djntv.com slash chill. Uh, Brian and Jay and John will be in there talking music tonight and have some fun with them. We'll catch you next week. Good night, everybody.